When I started attending college in Boston, I spent my freshman year in the dorms. It was a valuable experience overall, but it just wasn't for me. I didn't realize what an introvert I was until I was surrounded by people and activity 24-7, so I decided to find an apartment for my second year. After a bit of looking, I finally found someone who seemed compatible who was looking for a roommate. The place was a little farther from the college than I liked, but I decided to go with it. Before I signed the lease, my roommate told me that the building was built on the site of an old mental hospital. She said she wanted me to be fully informed ahead of time. I guess I thought it was a nice gesture, but I also wondered if I had been better off not knowing. I asked her if that information had affected her somehow. She said not really, but sometimes she got strange feelings when going in and out of the building, and that she'd also heard some weird sounds on occasion. I didn't really believe in all of that stuff. I was just happy to be out of the crazy party atmosphere at the dorm. Too many freshmen apparently had been overprotected in high school and were going crazy without their parents around. Anyway, there were a few other students living in the building, so we got a group together for carpooling back and forth to school. One evening, we had all decided to go into town. Two of us were waiting in the lobby for the rest of the group to get downstairs. I was just standing there looking around the lobby as I never really stopped there much before. And I noticed that there was this closet near the front door, and it was a bit open. I mean, I assumed it was a closet door. It wasn't labeled or anything. And I'd never seen it open. Anyway, I went over to take a peek inside, and it was open. Turns out, it wasn't a closet. It was a stairway. I called to my friend who was waiting with me. We looked down into the darkness, but there was no light switch at the top to turn on. We then looked at each other and said, what the hell? and we both headed down the stairs. We walked down slowly, me going first, feeling along the wall the entire way down. Eventually, I felt a light switch at the bottom, which I flipped on. Part of me didn't expect it to work, but I was pleasantly surprised when it did. We stopped and looked straight ahead, both of us looking into what looked like the entrance to a tunnel. That really surprised us, but then we heard others upstairs in the lobby and agreed that we didn't have time to check it out right then. We went back up the stairs and found the others waiting there. We had told them about the stairway, and everyone agreed that we should check it out when we got back. So we headed out and spent a few hours eating and talking about school. Then we decided to head back home. When we got back, we all agreed we still wanted to check out the tunnel. So all five of us went down there together to explore. We followed the tunnel for quite a while and then we came out into what looked like a hospital room, but like a really old one, not modern at all. There were hospital beds and bedpans and a variety of hospital equipment, but really old style stuff, like metal and no plastic anywhere. We found a closet full of straight jackets. In fact, we only knew what they were from seeing them in movies. It was all very strange, but in addition, there was also something out of place. And then it dawned on me. Even though the instruments were old, a lot of them were laid out on trays and looked really clean, like someone was getting ready to use them. And on one of the counters, I found an old note saying, give 300 milligrams if any problems. I wasn't sure what it was, but I was thinking 300 milligrams could be a lot depending on what it was. There were all these old wheelchairs lined up along the walls, and there was a bicycle down there but it didn't look that old. We wandered around not knowing what to think of it all, sort of in total surprise and taking it all in. There were a lot of rooms. It sort of seemed abandoned, and yet the electricity worked in all the rooms. Finally, we got to a far room when we opened the door. It smelled terrible. My friend reached around and flicked on the light, and instantly we noticed what looked like huge paw prints on the wall. I don't know anything about animal tracks but these things were too big to belong to anything average sized. There was an examination table in there, and there was blood on the walls. The room really freaked me out. I was imagining something trying to escape from the exam room, like there had been a fight and that caused the handprints on the walls. I think what really freaked me out is the smell kind of seemed fresh. Then I heard one of my friends shouting. I ran toward his voice. He had gone all the way down to the far end of the hallway and it reached a place where the tunnel resumed. 
I heard this loud growling coming from where he was, and as I approached him, I could see a gate with iron bars closing off the tunnel. Looking further, I could see that some kind of beast was behind the gate. It started howling and snarling and throwing itself against the bars. It looked incredibly angry. It was trying to break down the gate. Its teeth were incredible. I swear it had a double row of teeth and these horrible fangs. It was standing upright, and it was massively hairy, but I couldn't even figure out what it was. If it was an animal or a demon or even a mutant human. It had a short snout and a big humped back. It had to be over six feet tall, but not much more. And the smell was unbearable now that we were closer, like rotting meat. We stared at each other, none of us saying much, just breathing heavily and finally I yelled, Let's get the hell out of here. We ran back towards the stairs in the lobby, back past all the rooms and back through the tunnel until we finally reached the stairway. We stopped there and all I could say was, what in the hell was that? My roommate was like, what are we going to do? We ended up back in our apartment and thought about who to call. At this hour, we figured only the police would respond, so we ended up calling them. When they arrived, two officers headed down the stairway and were gone for at least 20 or more minutes. All we could hear down there was them calling out hello, but nothing else. Eventually, they both came back up looking like they had seen a ghost. Then, they taped everything off and took all of our contact information, all five of us. They sent us back upstairs and said they would get a hold of us later, but we never heard from them again. We tried to access a police report about that night, but we can't find anything. We were told that someone will get in touch with us about it, but we were never called. We've tried going there and getting it ourselves, too, but... Everything just leads to a dead end. Some of us have even given up and moved on, but me, I'm going to keep trying to get some answers. Hi Donovan, this story took place when I was about 16. It was 2009 in South Carolina, a little early in the morning before the sun came up. Every morning I would take our dog out to his runner before I left for school, so he could have some time outside. My mom was home that day, so she was able to watch him while he was out there. I noticed while on the way out to the runner, I saw over the trees to my left a set of three lights spaced out evenly that I had never seen before in that direction. We lived in a very rural area, so there were no big buildings, no water towers in that direction, nothing other than woods. I would lived there for years, so I really know what's in that area. I noticed them since the lights weren't that far away. I tried to listen to a sound as to try to figure out what those things were. Being down in South Carolina, we do have a lot of naval and air bases in the area. So I tried to see if it was some type of plane, even though the planes I've seen never had those type of lights. I should also mention that the lights did periodically turn off and came back on in order from left to right. I stood there quietly for about three minutes staring at these lights, noticing that there's no sound. They don't move in any direction. I eventually had to take the dog to the runner so I could catch my bus in time. So the runner was about 25 feet away from the spot I was standing in. From the runner, I could not see the area where the lights were. So I made sure to clip him quickly and run back to the spot so I'd have a chance to watch it for another moment before my bus came. It was a very short span of time. I'd say about 30 seconds. And by the time I rushed back to the spot, the lights were gone. With the lights I've seen from other people's encounters and pictures, I can definitely say that this was a UFO spacecraft, and also my first that I've seen. I've never saw those lights in that area again. I did mention it to my mother since she and I always believed in things that weren't believed by many others. She never mentioned that she saw anything like that, but at least if she ever saw them, she would know that she's not the only one. Looking back now, even though it was early morning, I heard no birds or wildlife in the area. My dog was noticing my behavior, but I feel he also sensed something was not quite right. Thank you for telling our stories, Donovan. Be safe and take care. <laughs>